Hey guys, here I'll give you a slightly different take on the recently released Ryzen 7000 X video chips. Yes, they're fast and in many places they compete for the first spot in performance, but there's much more to them and I feel like they're not getting the right attention. Over the past few years we've been getting a huge performance jumps from the latest generation of chips, but there's also been a massive shift in power consumption of these chips. It's all good and well to be the fastest, but at what cost? With energy prices being beyond affordable and concerns around the need for high-end motherboards that can support so much power, all of this drives up the costs as well as cooling requirements. So for this video, I want to not only look at the raw performance, but rather what it is like to run X3D and also highlight who these chips are for. Quick note, for now AMD has only released their 12 and 16 core chips. Their more budget-friendly chip is due to come out early April, so you'll have to wait and see how that one stacks up. For this video, we'll be working with the top of the line 7950X and also its new brother 7950X 3D. Let me quickly explain the design of the new X 3D chips and also what's special about them. Since the previous generation, AMD has been able to increase their level 3 cache on the chip by attaching extra memory directly to the top of the die, hence the name 3D. In the previous generation, this was only implemented on the 8 core 5800X 3D chip, which features a single CCD. However, there are some limitations to this approach, mainly due to power restrictions. As a result, these chips run at lower voltage, which consequently leads to lower frequency than their non-3D counterparts, and there is no option for manual overclocking. With the new CPUs, AMD has also installed cache on one CCD and left the second one in a more conventional design. This arrangement allows for one CCD to have more cache and lower frequency, while the other one has higher frequency but lower cache, resulting in a potentially optimal configuration. AMD has also provided users with some additional adjustments for these chips, including the ability to enable PBO and utilize their curve optimizer. Due to both CCDs being different, AMD has also released a bunch of tools within the chipset drivers to help Windows select the right CCD for optimal performance. Without going too deep into the details, there are optimizations concerning parking and enabling cores for different workloads and so on. If you get these chips, make sure to install a full list of chipset drivers and keep it updated as there will likely to be improvements and bug fixes coming for a little while. It is also recommended to set your Windows power plan to balance mode rather than performance to allow the new scheduling tool to function effectively. With the summary out of the way, let's jump into some benchmarks. For these tests, we'll be using a Gigabyte X670e Oros Master Motherboard, Trizen Z Neo Memory clocked at 6000 mega transfers, RTX 1490 GPU, and version 2 over the Asus Trix 360 AAO. In most of these tests, we'll be comparing the stock 7950X to the 7950X 3D with and without PBO and Curve Optimizer enabled. Let's begin with Borderlands 3. At 1080p resolution, we observe 3% improvement in average FPS when upgrading to 7950X 3D and additional 2% improvement when we used the optimization. As for the 1% FPS, there was a 3% improvement without optimization and further 6% improvement with optimization. One interesting aspect to note is the performance per 100 watts. Usually we would observe low value for this metric in CPU benchmarks, which is why we compute it per 100 rather than 1. However, in this case we observed incredible performance from X3D chips in terms of power efficiency. In fact, in this scenario, 7950X3D was 86% more power efficient than the stock and 90% more power efficient with optimizations. This is a huge deal. When we go up to 1440p, we see a similar story, but with 11% improvement on the 1% percentile performance at stock and 13% with optimization. Here, we have about 92% improvement in power efficiency. At 4K resolution, we found that the 7950X actually has the highest average FPS, taking the lead by 6.6%. However, it's still lagging behind on 1 percentiles and power efficiency. It's worth mentioning that this is the only game where the 7950X3D did not outperform 7950X. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn. At 1080p, we observed only a small 3-6% improvement in FPS, but a significant 61% improvement in power efficiency. Similarly, at 1440p, we saw even less improvement in FPS, but still approximately 61% improvement in power efficiency. And lastly, at 4K, there is essentially no FPS improvement as we're completely bottlenecked by the GPU, but power efficiency is still present at 64% improvement. This is really important, not just because of power efficiency, but also cooler requirements. Less power means cooler chip, but we'll get into that a bit later on. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Next game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here at 1080p, we have probably the biggest performance uplift of 23% while at stock, and 26% with some optimization. 
when it comes to power efficiency, we are at double the frame rate per watt when compared to 7950X, and this is while having high FPS. At 1440p, we are much of the same with 22-24% improvement on average FPS and 10-12% improvement on more percentiles, while still having double FPS per watt. At 4K, we noticed a slight shift with 16-17% to improvement on average FPS and 16-19% to improvement on more percentiles, with 92-94% to power efficiency improvement. We've also benchmarked World War Z. There is was about 5-10% to improvement on average FPS, 5-13% to improvement on 1 percentiles across different resolutions and 60-75% to power efficiency improvement. We can go on with this for a while, but it's kind of getting old pretty quickly. It seems like the X3D chip is generally performing better in most cases, with significant improvements in power efficiency across the board. There are some exceptions, such as Borderlands 3 at 4K resolution, where 7950X performs better. However, it is clear that X3D chip is delivering impressive results overall, particularly in terms of power efficiency. Let's now jump into the production workloads, where the previous 5800X3D chip did not really perform much better than its non-3D counterpart. And right off the bat, in V-Ray we see X3D chip losing out to its now cheaper alternative. On the other hand, when we run a more complex set of tests in DaVinci Resolve from PG Bench, there is performance to be gained from 7950X3D with PBO enabled. Do note, if we throw in Curve Optimizer, it loses out to the non-3D variant. In a short Blender benchmark, we see having more cache does not necessarily transfer to better performance, as the CPU runs only slightly slower. Same goes for the longer custom Blender render. Here we see the standard chip renders the scene 6.5% faster, but that's not the full story. Let's dig a little bit deeper. When we look at the CPU power during the test, we see a pretty drastic difference between 7950X and 7950X3D. That is over 80 watts difference, which is about 55-60% to more power for only 6.5% improvement. For me personally, that's not worth it. One area where the Ryzen 7000 chips have faced criticism is their cooling performance. These chips are designed to maximize their performance by running at high temperatures, up to 95 degrees, when under full load. The extent of their boost depends on the cooling provided. However, the new 3D chips consume less power due to their lower voltage. As a result, they don't boost as high. Consequentially, they run much cooler. In this example, we hit around 80 degrees and stay there. This brings us well to the conclusion. The latest release from AMD offers highly competitive chip for the high-end gaming with exceptional power efficiency. Despite its emphasis on gaming, this chip large number of cores enables it to handle production focused applications with relatively small performance loss. So if you're in the market for a chip that can handle both gaming and can do some projects on the side, this is a good but expensive option. Alternatively, if you're strictly interested in gaming, waiting for the 7800X3D release in April may be a better option. That chip is expected to form similarly, but at a significantly lower cost. Lastly, if you're looking to save some money, consider looking for an older 5800X3D chip. These chips are still available in some stores and are often heavily discounted. By pairing them with a the large generation of motherboards and RAM, you can build an impressive system at a much lower cost. I hope you found this useful. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.